everyone, Dr. Beth Westy here. Um, I am going to start this video by prefacing the fact that I am wearing this very fancy dress that I had a friend pick out for me. So, um, this is not my normal attire. Don't get used to seeing me this fancy all the time, we'll say. But I, I am wearing it because she got it for me. So there's that. But moreover than that, we're going to be talking about hormones, how they change when your body changes, um, where your hormone levels are at, where they move to, all these things. This is sort of a huge mystery for women. Um, why? Because no one talks about it. No one talks about it or how it works or what to do or what to think or what to expect or any of these other things, right? <gasps> okay, so I am going to jump right in, dive right into what to expect or what sort of can happen um, with your, oh, I feel you were waiting for this. <laughs> That's funny. Um, what can happen with your body as your body, what can happen with your hormones as your body changes? Um, I do have some of this information in my book, The Female Fat Solution, which is on Amazon. If you haven't picked it up, there's a ton of resources on how to match your nutrition for your hormones and your cycle. Um, this is going to be some fantastic art too, by the way, uh, drawing graphs and things. Uh, my jam. Yeah. Stick people and graphs. Whew, that's where I shine in the art department. Um, but this has a ton of resources. So nutrition for your hormones and cycle. I talk about nutrition as your body goes through different phases of life. I have a whole section in here called the seven bodies of Eve. You have a different body from pre-puberty to puberty to, you know, fertility age to after babies to perimenopause and menopause. Um, yes, right, Patty? Yes. After having baby, what to do and how to just match your whole food nutrition and help your body out. Again, these are easy, simple things, right? This is food that you eat every day. It's shifting how you eat it to really focus on your body. So overall, the biggest thing that I think women go through or the biggest misconception that I find when I work with women that are going through menopause or something or their hormones change. So this is, I want to, I'm going to say menopause, but this can be for a lot of different reasons. So if you, um, have some type of surgery or medication or, you know, like a birth control or something, um, that it, that makes it different or your hormones are not in the same pattern anymore, then, then that is, um, the net, those, these are the things are going to be referencing. You may or may not be going through this exactly. Right. And that's the other really tough thing. Overall, when you talk about how hormones change for the female body, the really tough and frustrating things are, no one knows exactly how long it's gonna last. No one knows exactly the fluctuations in the interim, what you're gonna experience. So this can last one year, this can last 10 years, a decade, a decade of you feeling like you're crazy, being stuck and frustrated because your hormones are all over the place. And when I say all over the place, again, I'll draw and describe all these other things, right? So I will put a link below this video where you can schedule a call with me if you've got questions, if you are stuck and you're frustrated. So you need help, schedule a call, more than happy to chat with you about what you're struggling with and the experience that I have in working with women. Also, if you know somebody, if you just had a conversation with your girlfriend the other day and she was talking about the same thing, feeling like I'm going out of my mind, uh, or I don't know what to do with this, that, or the other, share this video with her. I would so love and appreciate because my mission is to help as many women as possible to realize like, hey, there's so much more you can do to take charge of your health, to get into a better position and not be stuck trying to react to things, but to be more proactive because you have a new body then. When your hormones change and your chemistry changes, you have a new body. You have to fuel that body differently. You have to work out differently. You have to let it recover differently. And also, fun little cherry on the top, your body reacts to stress differently. <sighs> I know. All right, here we go. I'm just going to dive in and go because I'm talking really fast because I'm a little excited about going through this. I'm not excited that this happens, but I'm excited to go through this and explain this. So overall, when we talk about this, day one, day 14, day 28, this is the, I'm going to go through the normal because a lot of women just don't know this. You know, this is not something that's taught. Normally, normally, stress pains. <laughs> yes, it does, right? Uh -huh. Okay, so when we talk about normal, and this is about, right? This isn't exactly the same for everybody, but normally your body goes through. This is the estrogen phase, right? Estrogen phase. Uh, this is the progesterone phase here. 
right? So overall, this day one is the first day of your period. Day 14 is about when you ovulate. So things switch over here. Day 28 is when that ends and it all starts over again. Now, the other thing to kind of realize here, and this is, you know, I break this down in my book in a very simple fashion so you can kind of decipher things, but just look overall, you know, if I were to draw little dashes here, look at this week versus this week. Look at where your hormones are at. Look at what's happening. See how different that is? You have a completely different body during week one here than you do during week three over here. This is week two, this is week four, obviously, right? But look, look at it. Week one, week three, two totally different bodies. So if you are expecting to treat your body the exact same during week one and week three and expect it to respond the same, that's why you're frustrated. That's why you feel like you're crazy. Uh-huh, yeah, because you have different hormones, you have a different body. Now, this is where things get super fun because when your hormones start to change, when you're going through menopause and it happens differently if you're on like birth control or something, um, if you have a hysterectomy or something versus if you just sort of are going through that phase of life, a lot of times if you are, uh, if you have a hysterectomy, obviously things shift down. Birth control, things get muted um, and com I want to say compressed. That's not the right word. Um, everything comes down. Estrogen and progesterone are primarily produced by your reproductive organs, but they're also produced by other cells and tissues in the body. So it's not like you don't have any estrogen or progesterone at all. It's not like it just, there it goes, willy-nilly, totally gone. No, it, it, it's just smaller scale, right? It's a smaller scale. So let's draw, let's draw that smaller scale, right? So it's going to be like, oh, Okay, that's it. There it is. Oh, progesterone. Oh, we're not in the same phase here. Okay, there we go. Now, the thing is, is that this is, here's, here's what the tricky part is. Here's the thing that people miss out on. Are you ready? Are you ready? If you're going through this, it's okay if you say curse words. It's fine. Because when I talk to women about this, they usually have some sort of reaction to this because it makes them a little banana sandwich. Your body just doesn't go from here to here overnight. No, it doesn't. It doesn't go from here to here in a month. Like I said, one year to 10 years of a shift and a change. And then it's here. One to 10 years. How do you know which one is going to be you? Oh, you don't. And during that, we'll say five years. We'll say average. We're going to say five years here. Five year. We'll say this is, you know, five years that this is just the example I'm using. Now, during that five years, what can happen? Oh, fluctuation. Yeah. That means that your estrogen can drop, but your progesterone can still stay higher. You know, that'll lead to hot flashes. Great, right? Because estrogen is usually the first thing to drop, right? There's, there's a ton of, like, other things that can go into this but I'm just speaking generally so you kind of understand if you're in this kind of back and forth and up and down and all over the place and you feel like, oh, I don't know what's happening, right? Like, essentially, it can feel like, oh, my hormones were like this and now they're going like this and then like this and then like this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, your hormones will fluctuate over the period of time that you're going through this. Oh, what? <laughs> it's not just one, it's not just one. Both of them will fluctuate all over the place and you, and you don't know. And you don't, there's nothing, you don't get a manual. You don't get like a little alert on your phone. Bing, bing. Guess what today's going to be? <sighs> mm, yes. Yes. Um, ooh, thoughts on essential oils. Yes. Helpful. Yes. Um, so I can do a whole separate video on some other things. <laughs> That's hilarious. A little, little guy there. That's hilarious. Um, I can do a, a I'm going to go through this information. If you guys want more help with guidance on this, I'll do a whole new video on like the, like phase two, like this will be video one and I can do a whole nother video two on like next steps from here. Um, cause like things like oils and nutrition and supplements and stuff can help, but they all have to kind of work together to move you in the right direction where I find a lot of women, you know, reaching out to do different things. They will pull from 
I'm gonna try this with an oil. And then I'm gonna try this with this. I'm gonna try this with this. And, and you're like doing all these different things and it's not all whew, coming together um, to, move you, to move you forward, right? Um, in the same direction. Whereas with you, you've got different things up and down all the time. You, you gotta have a new foundation. Your body's, your body's going through a shift. You gotta lay down a new foundation for the new body that you're having to move you forward. So I'll, I'll do a different video to talk just about that because this is enough to, I find that it, if you know where you're at and kind of what's going on, it puts you in a better mind frame to understand, okay, to move forward. Otherwise you're gonna be like, well, how is this gonna help? Or how is that, right? You gotta understand what's happening. Um, so, so you can go up and down and fluctuate over whatever period of time it is for you that you're going through. Now here's the other kicker, because it's not just, just a drop in estrogen and then you go from there and then the drop in progesterone and then you're done, right? And then you go from these big ones to these little ones here. And there it is. No. <laughs> the other really fun factor that you get to sort of add in there is uh, stress. Stress. Hmm? Stress will impact this and make all of this even more amplified all over the place. And the other really fun thing about stress or their life events is that you can't necessarily plan for when all this is going to happen. If you feel like you're doing some good things with your health, say you, you change your nutrition a little bit, um, right off the bat, you're going to need more protein. Protein pacing is fantastic for this. You need more protein at this phase to do the same job that you were getting protein at here. So, so that's a key thing to understand. You need more protein to do the same job that it used to because everything in your body shifts and changes. So that's really key. Knowing and understanding that that's a, like a basic thing, like a foundational thing moving forward. Right. And then that your body is going to react to exercise differently. So you got to change it up, you know, interval, adding in some, some weight training, things like that. Because again, it's not, you don't have the same body you did before. And it's going through this shift that oof, is really tough. Now you're going to add stress to that. Right. Oh, thanks, Michelle, right? Yes, I am still wearing this fancy dress. Emily got it for me. So I'm showing off the fancy dress. Anyway. Hmm. If you guys really want, I will maybe invest in my wardrobe more and do fancier things. I think she got it from the Goodwill. <laughs> it's got real shoulder pads in it. It does. This is a real shoulder plaid. Okay, anyway, enough about my dress. Let's talk more about my <laughs> Get so sidetracked. Um, so the tough thing, so change your nutrition, change your exercise, your body's reacting differently, all this stuff. And then comes in stress. Stress is like a big sledgehammer that's going to take all the stuff that you thought you were getting under control and go. It's kind of what happens. It's really what happens. And then you sort of feel like you have to start over or you don't even know what to do. Cause then you're feeling like, Oh, what I was doing maybe wasn't working before or all these other things. You have to have all new, you know, plans and tactics for nutrition, for exercise, and for managing the stress all at the same time. And you've got to work with all of them. Otherwise, stress, that cortisol level, when it rises in your body, one, your body's not reacting the same. It's not going to react as quickly. And it's going to throw those other hormones out of whack way more easily, right? It's going to draw from that estrogen and progesterone. It's going to, it can mess up your thyroid. It can cause thyroid issues, right? It's because of like this cortisol monster just like takes over all, all these hormones. Um, so, oh good. I'm glad you like the sound effects. I know I'm so animated with this cause I get so frustrated that it's not talked about, right? Like these are things that are very key and important for women to know and understand about their bodies as they change. And, and they're not talked about. So women end up feeling like they're crazy and like, like there's no place to go for help or, you know, well, I, you know, I went into my doctor and all I said was to, you know, I needed to lose 20 pounds, but you know, I'm, I'm, should I go to the gym more? Not necessarily. Not if you're there five days a week already, you know, busting your butt. That just might not be the only thing that's going to do it. You know what I mean? Um, you know, there can be some nutritional changes, dietary changes. And then again, the managing the stress is so key and so important to move out of this. Um, faster. And so again, with stress, the tough thing is that you can't say, you know, you, you spend some time and you're like, okay, I'm going to lay my new foundation and, and I'm going to, I'm going to shift my new exercise. So I'm going to work with these hormones better. That's awesome. Right? Awesome.
But, you know, if you have other people in your life, you're just going to have stress. And you can't know that in six months from now, this is going to happen with this person. And all of a sudden, it's going to be a really stressful event in your life. Right? And by stress, I'll clarify for a minute, you could get sick, you could get injured. This could be you personally. That can change some things for you. It could be a loved one, someone in your close family could get sick or injured or something like that. There's always, you know, births and deaths and divorce and moving, right? Like all the top, you know, stressors. You know, life just happens sometimes for people. And if your body doesn't have a solid foundation, that stress is going to take over and like a wildfire rip everything down and you're just going to be left feeling like you, you guys have seen like wildfires where you know the the wildfires I'm pointing this way like they're this way it's probably not but out west right and like imagine that a charred forest bare dark ground right bare trees that's kind of what you feel like then after you know going through all this because you're like ravaged and you're like I got nothing I got nothing left ah oh, crap you know, because after going through all this hormone stuff that you've been busting your butt doing stuff, now the stress just wiped everything out. There you go. Um, yes, having this conversation with perimenopausal people. Yes. So this is so important to realize, like, because then it also plays an effect mentally. Like your your um, your body processes carbs differently, sugars differently right? Different types of sugars, fructose versus sucrose, you know, all this, like, yes, those are different, right? I'm getting a little bit farther into it, which I can get into in my next video, but understand that, hey, you know, your body responds to these things differently now. So again, tweaking these things can help set you up better. Otherwise, it's, you know, you're going to feel like you have brain fog. You can feel like, oh, oh, what's going on? I don't feel good. I don't have energy. I can't recover from a workout. Um, I'm trying to eat healthy, but it's just, oh, it's not... You know, oh, and now I'm gaining weight, like slowly, it's just creeping on, oh, right? These are the things that women struggle and, and are frustrated with. And then something will change and you'll be like, well, maybe it's getting better. Because maybe you're on like a little uptick, you know? And then poof, it can happen again. So having support, having a, having a plan, but having it be flexible enough to be working with you and the shifts and changes in your life. And, and maybe you have different goals. Maybe you want to run a triathlon or something, or maybe you want to, you know, accomplish something different. Great. But having a, a base plan with flexibility enough to navigate moving on to the next phases is really going to be helpful for you to sort of rein it in and keep moving, you know, squash that fire, you know, get rid of that stress as quickly as possible and, and move on from there. You know what I mean? Um, it, it makes a big, big difference in terms of, you know, move, you know, getting to that next level of health for yourself and then feeling like you, you again. Now, again, it's not going to be you like you used to be, right? Like as your body changes in hormone, you get a new body. It's a new body that you get to, then that's it, right? And it's one of those things like, oh, if you go to the gym to work, get healthy and work out and stuff. And you're like, oh, there, there I am, right? If you stop going to the gym, what? You're going <laughs> to, you're not going to keep those results by sitting on the couch eating chips, right? So you have this new body. So you just get to do all the same things to maintain that new body. The trick is knowing, hey, this is my new body. It's okay. It's, it's okay to be a journey to get there. But these are the things that I need to do to just maintain it, right? Easy peasy. Once women know these things, they're more than willing to do them. It's just you keep running in circles, trying all these things that don't seem to be working because you're trying to work with a body that isn't yours anymore. You know what I mean? So yes, there was a couple of things. Let me most of these ladies are not eating hardly anything and they're overdoing it in the gym. Yes, because you keep thinking I need to eat less and work out more and that's exactly the opposite of what your body needs. Your body sees it as a stressor, especially with these hormone changes, increases the cortisol even more and just woo, shuts down your metabolism. Boom, powers it down. And there you go. And you're like, ah, this isn't working at all. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then the brain fog on top of it ugh, is the worst. Um, thanks Paul. Yeah. So I play, uh, I play football actually for the Minnesota Vixen. That's one of my favorites. Yeah. Hamster wheel with hormones for sure. For sure. Yes. Um, so this is what I got for you guys tonight. This is a lot of information that I dove into. Yep. I can do another video on some like next steps. If you, this is you and you're like, holy crap. Oh no. And you feel like, yep, that's me. That's me. I got this wildfire going on right now. What do I do? I'll do a whole nother video with like, okay. 
here are the things you can do, here's how to space it out, here's how to take a step in the right direction so you can get better and feel better. Yes. All right, that's what I got for you guys. Thanks for tuning in. I'll put that link below if you have questions and you wanna you know, um, schedule a free call with me and just chat about you know where you're at and where you wanna get going to. Uh, more than happy and then again if you have any you know if you want more resources I have my books on Amazon I have a podcast the female health solution that is on um, iTunes and all that good stuff and then I a lot of my videos get uploaded all my videos get uploaded to my YouTube page so even if Facebook deletes them they're all on my YouTube channel which is just Dr. Beth Westy so you can get them all there and search for any videos that you would need all right so Oh, my outfit. Really? Okay. So this also has a pretty killer belt, in case you're wondering. So that's it. It's hard. I'm like sitting down in my way. This is like my little studio area. Um, but I mean, this is, this is legit. This is a real, this is a real dress. Yeah. Plus I'm 6'2", so I'm huge. I kind of, I don't feel like, maybe I'll post a picture of me in it. Yeah, maybe. All right, that's what I got for you guys tonight. Thanks for tuning in. Share this if you found it helpful, and I will see you later.